Warning: Lead and lead compounds are toxic. Always wear gloves when handling them. Lead dioxide is a strong oxidizer. Hi guys, this is Dr. Mih. I haven't uploaded new videos for a while since well I got COVID, so apologies for that. But anyways, I'm back for today, and we're starting a new project called electrochemistry. I know many of you are quite familiar with the topic, so I will try some harder and more interesting experiments on electrolysis. Today, we're going to make a lead dioxide electrode. First, some basic electrochemistry lessons. Electrolysis is when you insert two electrodes into a solution and split the ions in the solution apart. The anions in the solution goes to the positive anode, while the cations goes to the negative cathode. These ions can discharge on the electrodes and form products that we want. Using this method, we can make some very strong oxidizing and reducing agents that we otherwise cannot make. The underlying chemicals will be covered in future videos. However, in electrolysis, the electrodes must be inert in most cases because otherwise it is very easy to react with the solution. This phenomenon is mostly observed on the anode. Since it gives off electrons in the circuit, common anode materials are graphite and platinum, but graphite contaminates the solution with tiny particles of it, while platinum is obviously very expensive. There were other kinds of electrodes based on metal oxides, such as lead dioxide, iridium and ruthenium oxides, and manganese dioxide. These electrodes are resistant to oxidation and corrosion, since they are already oxidized and can't be oxidized further. Among these choices, I chose lead dioxide because it is the easiest to get and has an outstanding performance. The materials that we need today is a piece of lead and an electrolyte solution. I bought this strip of lead from a store for our fishing supplies, where it can be easily obtained. Lead is a soft and silvery metal, but quickly oxidizes and tarnishes in air. It should be noted again that lead is toxic, so safety precautions must be taken. The electrolytic bath is a mixture of sodium sulfate, sodium bisulfate, and sulfuric acid that I just got on hand. It can be replaced by simply sodium sulfate. We put the lead into the solution and connect it to the anode. We then place in a piece of foam nickel, which is basically nickel plated on sponge as the cathode. Electrolysis is then performed for several hours. Finally, after washing, this is our lead dioxide anode. You can clearly see the brown coating of lead dioxide. Do not copy me by touching the lead with bare hands. Anyways, this is how we make a piece of lead dioxide anode. I will use this later in making chlorates, permanganates, and persulfates. See you next time. Bye.